Right. Um. Yeah. So, um, as Kevin was saying, originally I was going to come up here and give a presentation on Corona slash Um. I run a small app development company, um, north of the Gold Coast, and basically that's how we've made our money for the last three years. Um, it's very hard to sell native apps, um, just from budgetary standpoints, and so customers almost always end up going for the cheaper, quicker, run everywhere, get it done, get it dirty option. So, um, yep, yeah, and that's just a quick run out of us. Um, anyway, so so basically, what was happening was we were developing these apps. Um, I was almost always unhappy with the output. Customers are generally happy with the output, but you could just just knew it wasn't. Um, React Native, when it first came out, obviously it was only iOS. Again, we couldn't service the multi-platform business, um, and at the same time, wasn't. I didn't feel like it was ready to go. I couldn't throw that at the customer. Um, so it's not quite just our own little startup where we can run punches with a deliver a product, and the product's got to work. So anyway, about three months ago, I had another crack at it. Um, thought, all right, we'll go back and check it out after you know, frustration. Um, anyway, and I thought I'd give give React Native a go. Uh, so obviously could overlap this weird UI glitches trying to do stuff. Um, I, even though Ionix, the sort of de facto standard, I moved away from that a while ago, just performance again, just trying to edge out whatever we could. So trying to move away from any sort of UI framework, built a lot of it ourselves. Still, the glitches, you know, were there. Clicking, performance, you know, you load your forms, having to do lazy loading for Angular stuff. Um, it's still everything was built out of Angular at the end of the day. Um, and they're just like, I've got one customer right now who wants me to do swiping left and right gestures and making that work is, well, it's possible to do a swipe left and make it happen, but following the finger and everything else and all the rest of that. Anyway, so, how to react there. Um, oh, sorry, for some reason still use Cordova. Um, if you need Windows, I'd probably jump on that. There is a Windows thing coming for it, so, but if you've got to support Windows for some reason, <laughs> you can try using Cordova. I'd still recommend using but just could develop your own native Windows app. Um, it's just shocking the performance there. Um, and if you're obviously too lazy to do anything new, or you just learn Cordova or Angular 2, then hey, stick with that for the moment. Anyway, so three months ago, like I said, we, I took, well, I took the leap. Um, my other guys on the team were still doing the Cordova apps, because again, that's what we had and what we had to support. Um, Anyway, the thing that really flicked me over and I just thought, you know what, maybe this really is worth a go instead of let's, okay, can we find some other way? I've tried to as well. Was when I read a blog post about from Facebook and it wasn't about making cross-platform apps. They wanted to make app development better. I thought, okay, that's a different take on it. Um, so I thought I'd have a go. Performance has been way better, um, so it was definitely worth a leap. Um, UI issues that crop up have been easy to resolve or just a lot of them just haven't been a problem. Um, they're just, you know, generally you can reason as to why something silly happened. Um, it takes, I've noticed it takes about the same amount of time to finish a product. We've now got four projects we've finished um, from start to finish and a few others on the go. Um, some pretty cool ones as well. Um, anyway, the, we, you get quicker wins on the, on the board with Cordova and PhoneGap, but I find the polish is what takes way too long. Um, ES6 is mandatory, which is nice. We're not dealing around we're playing at all really with the S5 code, even though it's there, but they don't feel it. Um, and the styling's really good too, and also there's some really good dev tools if you haven't played around with it. Um, so anyway, so this is the main topic, main topic of the talk. Um, it's really going from Cordova to React Native, and if you guys have ever played with Angular and tried to do some sort of mobile dev like that, hey, put your hands up, anyone has tried? Have a crack? Yeah, cool. All right. Um, Basically, the hardest, I call it a learning wall when I actually hit it, um, going to React, surprisingly. I wouldn't have thought it'd be so hard, it's the same language, just some JSX stuff that looks like HTML, you just chuck it into JavaScript. Um, but there were some big things that were just insanely frustrating. Um, so anyway, so I'm basically just going to go through the paradigm shifts. I'm not going to show you any real life code, it's just more around saying, okay, if you ever have a situation where you're going to go into it, these are the kinds of the, the quick start things you need to know to get, get running. First of all is JSX. Um, a lot of you are probably aware of this with React. It's it's basically just HTML that they build into the JavaScript. There's this thing called the Shadow DOM, makes things fast. That's pretty much what you need to know to get started. Um, the other thing for Angular, Angular React, um, I couldn't find any documentation anywhere on a folder structure that was efficient, and that was one of those things that if you do it wrong for a big project, you can you can find yourself really in a lot of pain. Um, this is basically it. So you break your app down into more pages, but a lot of people call them containers. Um, I found pages are just fine. 
um, the data. You got containers, you got components, um, assets of where we've been chucking our images, um, and APIs like effectively a service that just handles the API stuff. Um, and the services are just other bits of reusable code that really are just JavaScript. Um, anyway, this I've also not really come to you like this, this is the other thing too. I'm not coming to you guys as an expert here. This is just what's worked for us um, early on and what we've kind of picked up. And if anyone else has got any other ideas, very happy to hear them. Uh, but that there is a typical typical app that we've produced. Oh, also the um, and each of the pages, we've basically broken them down into a control and a review. Um, you don't have to do this, but I found it works well. If you want to sum it out with some HTML React, you can later on as well. Three years ago. Um, cool. So the other thing was Cordova. We call PhoneGap, as you, a lot of people probably know it, but Cordova is the thing that builds the app, sort of maintains the native side of things, and React Native has its own way of doing that. Um, Cordova is really good where you basically you generate the app, you never really need to know anything about the, the native side of it. All of the plugins work, you just say how to plug in, kind of magically goes in there, some of the configuration might be done sort of a little file at the base level. Um, whereas with React Native, you end up with a native project that you've actually got to maintain now. Um, there are some things where you can link the data into that, that project, but you need to now commit that project to the repo. So with Cordova ones, you don't, I don't actually commit the, the Cordova project to the repo at all, I expect it to get built. Um, anyway, so one of the big things you're going to come up against, um, and you don't realise until you try to do it, but luckily they do a lot of releases very fast at the moment with React Native, is updating. Um, there's a simple command, or React Native upgrade, I believe, um, I have to go check it. Anyway, what it does, it just says, oh, look, that file's changed from what we're delivering. So do you want to override it? Yes or no? It can show you a diff, but <laughs> that's great. You've just done, you know, like, you could, it might do some pretty big um, customization on those native side of the apps, and it's just a pain. Um, so then, anyway, there are some things, basically some Git strategies you can use. Um, I'm not going to go into them, but have a look at that. Some stuff you can think about. You can even do like a clean bit of code, which is what we've done as well in some cases. We've just got the pure React Native thing on a different branch, uh, which we upgrade that branch and then we merge that into the code, but that still gets a bit messy. Anyway, um, the nicest part of actually going to this was finally using some native controls. Um, the, if you've ever done any sort of native dev, um, it was really lovely to be able to say, oh, I want to use a scroll view, not just a div, which is, you know, you try to do, you know, <laughs> enlarge it out, and then things don't scroll and nothing works, and try to put something on the footer is an absolute nightmare. I've even got a, a public project called Snappy Apps Framework, which is this flexbox kind of crazy thing, which uh, it, it works, and it works in a lot of our apps, but at the same time, it's just an absolute um, nightmare to get this stuff right. In React Native, it's an absolute pleasure to use. Um, so anyway, just, just quickly on that, you've got basically your divs become an actual type of view that would be in it. Um, your buttons, there's actually a lot of different cool little button things as well, so you can click on it, you can go, hey, give me some native feedback, or just change the opacity or some highlighting, and, and they're really easy to use. This was the best part of it. Um, also, the other thing too, which I've got down the bottom there, um, if you want to make something platform specific, so someone I was quoting against the other day was bagging out React Native, saying, oh, you just can't make it look like it's run on the platform. Yeah, maybe we'll call it over, but not in this case. Um, it's very easy. You just name something .android, and you can have a .android chunk of code and a .ios chunk of code. And like I've used in the past, I've used Xamarin on another project, and they go, "Oh, great, that's cross-platform. We'll be able to just create an Android version." It just didn't work. Um, I wasn't part of that work, but well, I inherited it. Um, anyway, so but in this case, it's, it's a really good mix of cross-platform versus platform-specific code. Um, which we've done a lot with. The other thing you need to know, for a quickly, CSS just becomes React Native CSS. Um, effectively, it's just your same old CSS stuff. Um, doesn't cascade, though, through, and you can't do it with controls, or there might be a way, but I haven't found one yet. Um, but anyway, basically, it's just whatever you would use, your same styles, in camel case, and you just chuck in a JavaScript object instead of, um, instead of the yeah, your typical stuff. So yeah, um, there's also no units as well, just something to be aware of when you hit it. And, all right, this is probably going to be the most controversial part of the talk. Um, going from Angular to React and the binding. Um, it was a bit of a rude shock for me. Um, React's got a very different way of doing things. Um, so I found I was uh, the amount of bitching and moaning that I would make about something not working, something not updating, something not going right. 
then try to learn Redux, and Redux was just over the top, I felt like I just, like, the amount of copy and paste code that I had to do to make something happen, and then suddenly you try to do something async and it goes, can't do something async. Anyway, so there's two frameworks that they propose. One is Redux, which is highly recommended by Facebook as a community standard that's apparently the way to go. Everyone says, that's it, and you've got to try it. And so that's why I was so reluctant to give anything else a try. I said, no, I've got to learn this. Um, anyway, it's got some very, very cool tools. It is really worth a look at, and it's really worth learning. Um, you can go back and replay an entire user session, um, and like every single little action, you can see, hey, they did this and they did that, so it makes testing really, really good. Um, like I said, it's a community standard, but I found it insanely verbose. I was copying and pasting this, and copying and pasting that, and trying to make something here. Maybe I wasn't doing it the right way, but I gave it a good shot. Um, and I found that I was ended up creating, in a sense, more coding errors, because there was so much I needed to update to make one little thing work. Um, and a MobX. MobX is really, if you're coming from an Angular standpoint, give it a go, but I think, we'll get to that in a moment, um, it was easy to learn. It kind of just works. You basically have observables and you have observers. Um, if it's something's an observable object, you can just mutate it however you want to, and React you know, face will pick up the change. So it is very, very similar to what you would come to expect. It doesn't have all the cool tools. It's not the industry standard. People are going to look at you funny if you start using it. Um, it's not as easy to test, um, anyway, and there is some little fun enough if you just don't make something observable, but that's a bit of a thing. So my conclusion here, and this is, like I said, it's probably the most controversial part. Learn Redux, it is actually, there's a lot of, a lot of patterns that are, in learning it, it was good, but give MobX a go if you're sitting there frustrated and you're about to toss it out or give up. Um, anyway, you've got the job done, and it's worked really well for these projects, and Finally, uh, not quite finally, but almost, um, if you're coming from my link, you're going to go, where's all my controls? Especially, where's my button? Um, one was just added just in the last release of React, but there is no button control, um, which is usually a bit of a shock. Doesn't take long to get over the shock, though. Um, but the actual styling, there's something called native base, which kind of tries to replace my link for React. Um, it's kind of okay. Um, problem was we used it, we ended up with a whole lot of compatibility issues here and there, and it just ended up being easier to run our own controls. Again, I'm probably a bit biased here because I've written my own UI stuff. Um, but I, yeah, yeah, give it a go if you really feel you need to, but it's probably more of one of those learning, it's more of an approach to learning than getting on with the job. Um, there's two, two essential libraries you're probably going to need to learn. React Native Router Flux, um, which is just the, the router. There is a new React Native router that's come out, the navigation one. Um, I had a bit of a play with it. There was some funniness around it, um, just around how the navigation works, which that routing tutorial <laughs> would have, um, anyway, would have probably been a good one for this. Um, anyway, that, that gets the job done again in a hurry. And also right, and vector icons. Um, don't, if you're going to go grab Native Base, don't implement the Native Base one. Um, grab the vector icon, it's a very cool little library, it just has all the various libraries out there, you can chuck it into your app really quickly. Um, anyway, yeah, that's it, that's um, for me. So like I said, I'm not an expert on this, this is just what we picked up after a few months of dealing with it and in real life trying to get, get things out there and get the job done. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah? Um, yeah? Angular CSS or React? Uh, yeah, so I mean, Angular CSS is just regular cascading style sheets. It's just like you would normally use. Um, with React, it's not CSS. Um, but what they've tried to do is keep the, the, the language largely the same. Um, so the big thing around the units is, uh, I've not quite worked it out, but you'll, you'll say I want it to be 16 instead of 16 point or 16 pixels. Um, and you just kind of fiddle with it. Um, there's some really cool tools that allow you to very quickly do the development cycle, so it'll update on your native device. You can do it even with hot reloading, so as soon as you hit save, it's just there. Kind of like a live reload in the web here. Um, but obviously on the device with all of the extra bits, it's actually really, really handy. I hate going back to the other things without it. Um, so look, it takes a bit of fiddling. Someone else might be able to explain the units better than me. Um, but it's basically unit, that's what I need. I don't, it's, I don't think it's pixels, <laughs> whatever it is. I think, I think it's because the different um, DPI of the different devices, I think it tries to keep it largely, largely the same. I think that's the reason for it. Uh, so, yeah? On iOS, it's display points. Okay. It's two pixels <coughs> on a retina device. Okay. Or one on a retina. 
Yeah, so it's, it's about the DPI stuff. Cool, thank you for that. Um, there's so much potential for code sharing between the React Native apps and a React web app. Yes, um, you probably need to structure it correctly. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not even done on React web app, so I'll probably come to this like that. Like everyone says, you've got to learn, learn React first, which is probably a bit of a disadvantage. Um, but look, yeah, if you structure it, like I've got the little page here, I'll quickly find it. Yeah, so if you structure your page with all that pages view on the side there, where you basically have a controller or a view and you break them out, or at least break away the code from the from the JSX code, it shouldn't be much to almost have a login controller, well, sorry, login view.web.js, say. Um, and then you just have a different entry point to the app, which always makes it really. Um, so look, yeah, it should be done. I haven't done it in practice, though, but it shouldn't be that tricky. Um, I have a slight follow-up to that. Yep. You had a recommended router for it. Do you think that would cause problems with HTML? You probably wouldn't use that router, I'd say. So they use more to, you, yeah. So there, there's still be a fair bit of stuff that you change. So from um, from memory, the Discord guys, because they've got a React Native app as well as uh, I think it's the desktop. No, they they, they 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 converted that web one to from, which is in React to React Native. Apparently, it took them a couple of months to get it to get it right and ready. So um, going that way <laughs> definitely works. I don't know about the other way. Um, so are you guys using React now for all your projects? I, I can't see a reason why we're going to go back. I mean, I've got this one that's going on at Rio Tuno at the moment, which is, they've got this requirement, they got given a bunch of free Windows phones, so now suddenly we've got to support Windows. <laughs> um, the Cordova app, though, just doesn't work. It is so, so slow, um, partly because Edge seems to want to load the entire view and every single bit in it instead of just what's on the page, and they've got some really complex forms. Um, so we're trying to optimise it as best we can, but yeah. Um, look, honestly, yes, I, it's the performance and, and when, you, when you're playing with the two apps side by side, you know what you can do in Cordova, and I've, I've done it, I've done it there, and what, you can, what I can produce is so much better. Um, I haven't, I'm yet to come up against anything at the moment that I haven't been able to sort of do and go, you know what, it's time to jump back. Okay. So just for the question from that gentleman, um, sure. from my experience, um, React.js and React Native libraries are not shareable, so you, yep. can't, you can't use the libraries that you use in Native and reuse them in React.js. That's so just to be mindful. No, that, that is correct. So yeah. I guess I guess probably what so. a lot of the, a lot of least of the code, the way it's structured in the logic, could probably plug fairly easily into it. You know, as long as you, you separate it out. That's the reason why I guess I was saying I'm trying to break it out a little bit. But definitely you're not going to be able to write the same JSX in React Native, which has got a text for element instead of the div, which has got text inside it. Um, so it's, it's going to be different. You will have to rewrite it. It's not like Angular or Ionic where you can literally deploy the same app in two places. Is that the same for, you mentioned the iOS and the Android yep. uh, components, is that the same for that? So are they cross-platform and they just look different or are they? The, the iOS and Android ones, so what you, you can do, you can either detect what the device platform you've got is, or you can create two files and, and the React Native is good enough to be able to say, you know what, we're on Android, and it will load the Android file. Um, so whatever code or whatever logic you've got with that, you can do it. So an example was for iOS, I had a sliding date picker that was in, in, you know, on the actual page. Um, but for Android, they don't have any sliding date pickers. So what happened was instead, it showed a totally different control, which had selected date. You click on it and it did the pop-up UI. Um, but at the end of the day, all I said was just date picker. Go do it. Yep. Uh, have you done anything with the Android app that I haven't, I haven't tried to cross the bridge. Um, we've had to do a lot of stuff where we are like firing up, say, the Xcode the project in, in the Xcode to integrate stuff. Um, I've, I'm working on one project at the moment, so it's actually more of a platform. So we've got four apps that are effectively the same app, totally configured, and that's it. That's in React Native. Um, and so that one, I've had to go do a fair bit of tricky stuff around it where you've got, in Gradle, you've got something called um, flavors and try to integrate that and make that work in iOS when I've got the same libraries yet. Anyway, so there's all this sort of stuff. Um, I haven't done the bridge yet. I haven't had the need to. The community is pretty good. Most of the stuff that I need yet has already been done by a fairly well supported project. Definitely not as mature as the Angular stuff. Like. Um, that community is, you know, has been there for a lot longer and the code. You can always find a much better quality project. Yeah? Oh, talk more about Redux? Yeah, like the 
Look, look, honestly, it's probably one of those things where people are gonna, this, that's the bit where I'm gonna get crucified the most. Um, the, pro the problem I found with Redux was the organization became really verbose. I wanted to do one little thing and to do it right, even though know, a lot of people say you only use Redux when you need to, and that could be a point to do, but to really get that replayability, which is what I was looking for and hoping to get out of Redux, um, you really want every single little thing from Mark together to run through the Redux, Redux ecosystem or just about every little thing. And so uh, the simplest things like just trying to make some text enter, even though it wasn't hard to do, was a lot of work. And, and sometimes when I found when doing all of that, a lot of work to, to make something simple happen, you end up having just a, a chance to introduce more bugs into the system. When you say a lot of work, what, what do you mean by that? Probably a bit too much to get into here, probably worthwhile having someone give a really good talk on Redux. Um, but the idea with Redux, and it's, it's a really simple idea, actually I did a, a couple of tutorials as I was learning doing, using Redux in Node.js. It was actually really simple and actually really good. I was like, hey, that's, that's actually cool. Um, so the way, way Redux works is basically something, an event happens, you have an action, which fires off into what's called reducers and stuff, and you work at what action you want to take. Then they then go and, not mutate, they actually go and recreate the state of the app. And then from the state of the app, um, then everything goes and then updates off that. Anyways, but there's, the, this, even though the cycle's actually pretty straightforward, okay, it's an action which ends up modifying something. Um, it goes through a little circle, then, then you can do, go around and around. Um, it, to do it in practice was a lot more work than I wanted to do, or at least I found practical for me getting the job done. Um, so I, I imagine there's a lot of, lot of really good applications for Redux, and there's probably a lot of times where I should be using it. Um, but I ended up going from really kind of loathing the learning curve to suddenly being productive and useful as soon as I made the, the switch over. I go, oh, cool, I can actually do this. And then, you know, going and the So I'll probably come back around again and have another crack at it. But it was just, it was, it was just very, very verbose, the, the workflow. Some like wiring stuff up. Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was really low level wiring stuff up. And, you know, I needed to get off that. MobX, yeah. Um, so, so look, MobX, basically what it is, it's a bunch of getters and setters. Um, if you've ever played with sort of properties and the Visual Studio kind of thing, that's, that's kind of how they work. Um, so all it does is when you set, it so basically it attacks, a, it attacks a little set function onto every single variable, and every time you set something, then it goes and fires off the state stuff, from what I understand behind the scenes. Um, when you're console logging out the objects, they actually make them look pretty nasty. Um, but yeah, so but look, it handles a lot of that stuff for you, and it look, it's very productive, um, you know, and with with a minimal amount of boilerplate. And so, yeah, look, it's, that's one of those to each their own. I mean, I'm, I'm just giving my opinion on it, um, but I imagine there's some very strong opinions in the room to the contrary. So. There always are. They are. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. Right. Give him another round of applause, everyone.